Bone Tomahawk, huh? Wow, yeah. They made this movie. This one? They made it. It's here. We're gonna talk about Bone Tomahawk and it's gonna get uncomfortable because I have thoughts. Hey, content warning on this video. Guess what? The movie's real racist. And if that statement makes you angry, you're probably not gonna like this video. <laughs> Yippee-ki-yay, Mr. Falcon, and welcome back to Western four consecutive videos, formerly Western Month, which I am still contractually obligated to observe even though Bobby Duke no longer works at this company. Hey everybody, I was assured by multiple people that the movie Bone Tomahawk would be fine, that I could watch and enjoy it, which is kind of, kind of messed up actually, uh, in, because uh, it, it's, uh, well, Without Bobby here, I can get as performatively woke as I want. And oh boy, oh geez, oh dang, do I have some criticisms to suggest about the film Bone Tomahawk. But before that, let's hear a word from our sponsor, from the new star of the channel, Robbie Duke. Hi everybody, it's me, Bobby, Robbie Duke, the new star of the channel. Although, much like my predecessor, I lack the inherent star quality and charisma that Mildred brings to the channel. Robbie, please. I, I didn't train him to say that. They, they just said that on their own. Say, Mildred, how do you keep that shapely physique of yours when you eat so much breakfast cereal? Isn't that stuff full of sugar? No, you ignorant fool. I eat magic spoon cereal. That stuff's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four net carbs per serving. Sure, they may taste like the same old Saturday morning breakfast cereals you remember from your sweet, innocent childhood where nothing hurt and summer seemed to last forever. With classic flavors like fruity, frosted, cookies and cream, maple waffle, and my favorite, peanut butter. But these puppies are only 140 calories per serving. High protein, low carb, what's the matter? Can't eat gluten? Don't worry, they don't got gluten in them, or soy, or grain. They're even keto friendly if that's your thing. Wow, can I try some of your magic spoon? No. You can get your own. Click the link in the video description to build your own variety box. Don't forget to use coupon code SCARETYCATS, all one word, to get $5 off your first box. Now available in the UK and Canada. Magic Spoon is so confident you'll love their product that they offer a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it, for any reason, they'll give you your money back, no questions asked. So you got nothing to lose. Go to the link, click the link, click on it, click on it now. Well, that's it for me. I can tell the people came here to see Mildred. You know what? You're the star of the channel. Well, I mean, yes, but it's not a competition. Bye, Robbie. <whistles> Bone Tomahawk has been on my to-watch pile for a long time. The main thing I had always heard about it was how it kind of walks a fine line that takes what could have been a very racist premise, but does it in a smart enough way that it's fine, actually. It's fine. And, uh, um, no, no, they didn't. And I, well, I don't want to get too up my own butt about this because it's not really my place to get angry about the way that the movie leans into some old as dirt, ugly stereotypes about North American indigenous people. But it is entirely fucked up the way that people seem to buy the movie's half-hearted excuses for how this is all fine, actually. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Bone Tomahawk tells the story of a group of men in the Old West who are going on a road trip to the territory of a mutant clan of cannibalistic monster people who have kidnapped some of the people from their town. Most notably, one of their wives. After a couple of bandits desecrated their sacred burial ground, the cave-dwelling monster men are called troglodytes. Some of them have horns, and they all have a bone thing sewn into their throats that lets them do big screams over long distances. They do not speak, but they do make weapons and wear clothing, so they possess some rudimentary human intelligence. They're not human, per se. They're part human, kind of not something that has devolved through centuries of inbreeding to become these pale, bestial, heartless, predatory beings. Not unlike the British royal family. I'll be straight up with you. Th this is a fucked up premise for a movie. You shouldn't make your movie about this. If you're planning on making the movie Bone Tomahawk, don't. It seems to me like what is happening here is that 
Writer-director Stephen Craig Zahler took all of the racist tropes about indigenous people in Westerns and said, oh, no, 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 that's not true of them, obviously. That'd be racist to say that real people are like that, but what if there were people like that? That'd be pretty fucked up, right? That's what my movie says. Look how fucked up it'd be if people were like the racist stereotype. Scary. And I'm not the racism police. I'm not gonna tell you you can't watch it or like it or whatever. I have no interest in trying to discern your moral character from whatever media you like. Think whatever you want. I don't know you. I have no business judging you. And I'm certainly not trying to make anyone feel guilty. But that being said, who boy. This movie is a big time racism. It is so racist that, in my opinion, it's difficult to try and salvage anything good from it. Sure, there are things it does well, but I'm not really going to talk about those things because they're all overshadowed by the elephant in the room. The horrible anti-indigeneity baked into the whole friggin' thing. Now, okay, they do try and hand wave the whole thing away. Like they have a scene where a native character called the professor practically turns towards the audience and says, oh, those guys? The troglodytes? They're not like us. They're a different thing. No racism here, everybody. In fact, in fact, in fact, they probably only seem similar to you because of your racism. If you think that they're similar to us, that's you being racist. So you're the racist one, actually. And in fiction, he's saying that to the guys in the room, that he doesn't expect enough of them to make that distinction on account of their old-timey racism, but it, it does read like a preemptive response to the inevitable criticism. And while the characters do have the prejudices you'd expect of white dudes in that era, they portray them as all deep down not being hateful people. They're just kind of of their time, which itself is a kind of problematic excuse, but that's the idea they're going with. Like, they call indigenous people savages and shit. And indeed, they do not recognize much of a difference between indigenous people and troglodytes, who they kind of refer to interchangeably. So, like, the movie spends most of its time treating these two groups as the same, not because the movie necessarily thinks that, but because the characters in the movie do. Like, they call the troglodytes savages, which in this context is just a derogatory term for indigenous people. There is no distinction in the character's eyes, and aside from that one scene, the movie doesn't try too hard to make the distinction either. It just does it once and it's like, you get it, right? Moving on? Can we move on? You get it. Now, I don't expect that the characters would make the distinction, but it feels like the movie should have something to say about that. That they should have to learn not to think like that and change. But the movie doesn't really challenge the white character's view of race at all. They're all presented as kind of backwards, but ultimately not hateful or mean-spirited people, except for one of them. The one truly racist guy, more on him later, complains, for example, that his horse would never let a Mexican ride her. The passively racist but deep down chill guy, the sheriff, played by Kurt Russell, is like, You trained her in bigotry? Big laugh. Got him. See, you know, he's cool. He gets it, right? It's racist to train a horse not to like Mexicans. We have established that we agree that that is racist. Can we all agree that would be a racist thing to do? Okay, so the Mexicans are bandits who do steal the horses, but it's okay because we did have a character say out loud that judging them prematurely for that would be bigoted. So we're all good, no racism here. Textually, the movie is not racist. As long as you take the movie completely literally, it's not directly stating anything racist. See, what they've done here is they've taken all the racist shit they wanted to do, all of the deeply problematic storytelling tropes that come along with the story they wanted to tell, and just kind of attributed them to a, a stand-in monster race to dodge criticism. Like they pressed control F on some 19th century slur for indigenous people and replaced it with monster guy. And it's not that I think Bone Tomahawk is trying to insidiously suggest that native people are less human or monstrous or whatever. I wouldn't go that far. And I think if that were the intent, they probably wouldn't have tried to justify it at all with the whole troglodyte conceit. But I do think the movie is a little too comfortable borrowing the imagery of more sincere racism to sell what is ultimately a silly little story. There is an extended sequence where one of the captives of the troglodytes gets scalped, which... What do you think they're invoking with that one? Because that strikes me as a pretty direct comparison between the brutality of the fictional monster people and the real-life violence that some native people practiced. Violence which was characterized by settlers as evidence of an alleged unique inhuman brutality and cause for exterminationist violence. Likewise, in this movie, this scalping is cruel and evidence that the trogs gotta go. But it's not racist, of course, because they're not actually indigenous people, they're monster guys. 
Even the central conceit of the movie, that the troglodytes have kidnapped a white woman, is as scholar Matthew Carter put it, informed by one of white America's oldest and most paranoic of racist, psychosexual myths, the captivity narrative. This is a genre of semi-fictionalized literature where people are captured by some group considered to be evil or godless, and they persevere because they're of their inherent white virtue. The not-so-subtle implication, when a white woman is captured, or just chose to live among racialized people, as was often the case, is that she will be sexually assaulted to produce, horror upon horrors, mixed-race children. Now, that, that doesn't happen in, in Bone Tomahawk. The troglodytes have no such ill intent towards the lady they've kidnapped. They're gentlemen about it. They just want to eat her, no funny stuff. But the other characters don't know that, and they speculate about it, and it's only like, half an hour later that the audience finds out that that lady is still alive. So the movie is definitely establishing that assumption in the audience's mind and using that to drive the tension. And I really can't stress this enough. I don't think the movie was trying to send a racist message without getting caught. I don't think that the intent here was to sneak a like racist red pill into theaters with plausible deniability. This isn't some ideological Trojan horse. I mean, I don't know that for certain. Maybe it was, but that's not the read I get from it. To me, if anything, this movie is deeply ambivalent about race in a, in a very thoughtless way. Okay, so there's this guy, Bruder. He's played by Matthew Fox. He's kind of a shitty guy, the heel of the group. You're not meant to like him at first, but I guess Matthew Fox didn't get the memo because he's a lot of fun in the role. He's, he's really good. When you watch how you speak to the law, Sheriff, especially. You aren't captain. No. I'm the most intelligent man here, and I intend to keep us alive. Oh, you're the most intelligent man here. Is that a fact? It is. He is the one character who the film portrays as not simply a man of the times, but racist, actively hateful, super, like, white supremacist racist. And I've killed more Indians than everyone here put together. Well, it's an ugly boast. It isn't a boast but a fact. During the war, Bruder admits that he killed women and children, claiming that they presented a danger to him, as, like the men, they were capable of wielding a spear or bow. The other characters view this as shocking and despicable, as one would. But then, later in the movie, we find out that the reason Bruder hates indigenous people so much is that his mother and sister were killed by an indigenous raid. So, Reading this charitably, I think what's meant to be communicated here is that violence, particularly racist violence, is a, is a vicious cycle. That Bruder is the type of person he is because of the violence he experienced, which he then visits upon others, and so on, and so on. That he is a product of his tragic circumstances, and not simply a cruel person by nature. That racism and violence are learned behaviors, and not simply innate flaws in the human character. Fair enough! I agree with that. But then later in the movie, Bruder is injured and chooses to heroically sacrifice himself so that the others can escape. And he says, like his last words are, he says he'll, he'll try to kill as many troglodytes as he can. So that kind of complicates this vicious cycle narrative, doesn't it? Because if his big heroic gesture is to keep killing for revenge, that does kind of imply that he is justified in doing that and that his desire for revenge is natural and noble. He doesn't have to learn or change, but is redeemed through further violence. And again, it's not textually racialized violence. The troglodytes are not human, but the character doesn't make that distinction. In his mind, he's killing more native people in his big heroic last stand. And yes, I am using that term deliberately. So, so do, you, do you see that ambivalence I'm talking about? Like, Bruder is a monster. The film does not equivocate on that, but we understand and sympathize with his motivations. Sure, he wants to wipe out some races of human beings. But he loves his horse. He wasn't born bad. The world made him that way. And since the only perspectives we get on racist violence in the movie are from white people, we therefore extend a generosity of spirit to white racists, while everyone else kind of just exists in the periphery or is literally a monster. We never hear, for example, from the surviving family members of the people Bruder killed. The question that kind of hangs in the air about that, to me, is would the movie give that same generous spirit to them? 
If one of them talked openly about how it's good to kill as many white people as possible, like Bruder did about indigenous people, would the movie likewise go to such lengths to excuse it because of the violence they experienced? Would the audience be as sympathetic to that character if he, like Bruder, never changed or learned a lesson? I know it may seem gratuitous to some that I've focused the entirety of my critique on the racism I see in this movie, but I read a lot of other reviews and discussions about Bone Tomahawk, and people tend to kind of just brush this topic off. They seem to take the movie at face value, like they take the movie at its word, and just accept the little fig leaves it hangs over the racist imagery it thoughtlessly portrays. As though that's enough to make it totally, certifiably, not racist. I mean, how could the movie be racist when it said in the movie that racism is bad? And look, if you want someone to talk about the grittiness of the effects or the charm of the cast and dialogue, there's plenty of that out there. For my money, though, this movie's not worth defending, and its merits don't cancel out the harm that I think it does. I don't see the point in talking about anything else about it, quite frankly. That'd be like discussing how good a poison sandwich tastes. Who cares? It's poison. That's the, that's the relevant detail. So I do, not, I do not recommend Bone Tomahawk, if it wasn't clear. Not a big fan of that one. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Go ahead, go to magicspoon.com slash scaredycats. Use coupon code scaredycats to get $5 off your first order. Link in the description. Go ahead, go ahead, do it.